for me getting out of the military, that was probably two or three sustained years there where I was just trying a lot of different things. I went to school. I didn't know what to study. I wanted to go into fashion design because it was, I was curious about it and excited me. And I wanted to do something really hard and kind of pure with it. And I followed that instinct to bespoke tailoring. I really enjoyed kind of observing the fashion of other people. That got me into photography. That got me a, a job offer, which I accepted. And that led me, you know, that led me into, into fashion photography. I thought, okay, this is the last place on earth I'm ever going to see any kind of fashion or style story. Like, it's never going to happen. Um, I'm just here to try to do my best job as a photojournalist. Seeing that these guys were, you know, they were beset on all sides by enemies and they were still making an effort every single day to preserve their way of culturally dressing. And that their way, even though it seemed very strange to us, with the kind of pajama clothes and the wrap around the waist was actually as functional as our military uniforms. The wrap was there to suppress their stomach when they couldn't eat because they were on campaign and to support their back, which I can relate to. I was in the mindset then because we were, there was a reconnaissance unit of really closely observing people. And you're spending, you know, days on end in really horrendous conditions, watching people at a distance and just trying to divine all of the possible information you could just from observing them and observing the environment they're in. That definitely fed into my work in fashion because it's very much, very, I very much do that as an observer and I'm very much interested in how much you can read into someone by what they're wearing in the context that they're that they're wearing it in. You know, the nice thing coming from a military background is like you've been given the discipline and the values that a vast majority of people will never have taught to them or instilled in them. You have those things, you don't really need to worry about them. What you need to concern yourself with is finding where the intersection of your passion and ability is and taking that to a very deep place to try to find, you know, a line of questioning or a line of passion that will really sustain a career so you know if it takes a few years of that and you're really trying each day and you're, you're really trying your hand a lot of different things like don't feel like that is not serious the work of finding what your passion is in life is the beginning of any work that matters <laughs> <laughs>